Hello and welcome to Alamander Textiles YouTube channel. In this tutorial I'm going to explain how to make a drawstring bag. The first thing that we'll be doing is measuring out our fabric. For this bag we are using calico and the calico I am using is 90 centimeters in width. Now the measurement we need is 35 centimeters by the 90 centimeter width. So I've put the 35 mark of my ruler on the edge of the fabric and I've placed a mark uh, at 35 centimeters in, in two places. Then I'm going to line up those two marks that I drew along the length of the ruler and rule all the way from one side of the fabric to the other. And that gives me a piece that is 35 centimeters wide and 90 centimeters long. Next up, I am going to cut along the line making long smooth cut marks with my scissors all the way from one side to the other. Remove the excess calico out of your way and then fold the calico in half long ways like this and place a crease at the halfway mark. So you can use your fingers or if you want to you can use an iron to place your crease. Open out your piece of calico and then cut along the crease. Again, using long smooth strokes with your scissors. So once you finish, you will have two pieces of calico, 35 centimeters wide and 45 centimeters long. The next step is to overlock the edges of both pieces of our calico. So taking over to the overlocker, you're going to run each edge of each piece of calico, so eight edges in total, through the overlocker making sure you just cut off a tiny sliver of calico when you do this. We don't want to be removing huge chunks and remember that you do need to remove a small sliver of fabric so the overlocking will overlock correctly and you won't have loops of thread hanging off the edge. Repeat this over and over again for the eight sides of calico. So that's four edges of both pieces of calico. Once you've finished overlocking, you need to remove the thread that's hanging off from the overlocker. So just take a small pair of thread scissors and cut those chains of thread off each edge of calico. The next step is screen printing. Using the stencil that you have created for your screen print, you are going to line up your stencil with the screen onto one of the pieces of calico. Make sure that the other piece isn't underneath because it can bleed through and uh, ruin your back piece of calico. Have a friend hold the screen down in place for you and use a squeegee to firmly push the ink through the screen, making sure that it covers the entire print of your stencil as you go. Remove the excess ink um, from your screen so we don't have too much left over and place it back on the pot. Once you have pushed the ink through and you feel happy with how the ink is gone, has gone through the screen, then you can lift up the screen and admire your work. The next step is to hem your bag. Over at the ironing board, you want to fold over a short edge of your calico one centimeter over and iron this down in place all the way across from one side to the other. Now on your screen printed side you want to make sure that your screen print is the right side up because the hem needs to be on the top edge of the screen print. If you put it on the bottom edge your screen print will end up upside down. Over to the sewing machine and you're going to sew along that hem. Now where you want to sew is on top of the overlocking stitches you, that will ensure that the hem stays down and won't uh, fall back up again. If you, if you sew along the folded edge rather than the overlocked edge, the hem can move and just lift back up. Make sure you reverse stitch at the start and the end of both your hems and repeat on the other side. The next step is to sew your bag together. Take your two pieces of calico and make sure you put the right sides together. So one of your pieces will have a screen print on and that should be facing up. 
then put the other piece of calico face down on top of it and you want to make sure that the hem the good side of the hem is facing each other that will help you make sure that your right sides are together because calico doesn't really have a right and a wrong side pin those two pieces together so they don't move while you are sewing and then what you want to do is take a ruler and measure five centimeters down from the top edge of your bag so the top edge is the one with the hem on it take that measurement and mark it with a pin and then repeat on the other side five centimeters down from the top edge of your bag and also mark that with a pin Next up you're going to draw your seam allowance onto your bag. The seam allowance for this project is one and a half centimetres in from the edge. So I have lined my ruler up one and a half centimetres in from that edge and I'm making sure that my ruler is parallel to the edge of the fabric and I'm drawing using blue tailor's chalk so it stands out for sewing and I'm marking those edges right to the very edge but leaving the top bit, the 5 centimeter gap that I measured out earlier, does not get marked. Right, now off to the sewing machine. I'm going to start sewing from that 5 centimeter mark down from the top, making sure my needle lines up with the blue tailor's chalk that I have used to mark out my seam allowance. And I'm using a straight stitch, a regular straight stitch, with a length of 2.5 and a width of 0 to sew the edges of my bag together. Now I'm going all the way to the very very edge and then reverse stitching. I will then turn the bag around and repeat for the bottom seam making sure I reverse stitch at the start and at the end of my seam and I'll also repeat this for the side seam on the other side um, again leaving the gap of five centimeters at the top you do not need to sew the top of the bag, that opening where the two hems are, uh, that will form the opening of the bag. If you sew that shut now, your bag will not open later. Now you've sewn your bag together, it's important to remove the pins. So this next step is how to top stitch the 5cm gap. So back over at the ironing board. For this I've used the sleeve ironing board, the mini ironing board, and I am putting that inside my bag and I'm opening out the side seam. So you can see that I'm opening that out there and as I open that out, I'm ironing that seam open. This process keeps the seam open and flat. Once I've done one side, I need to turn that over and repeat on the other side, opening out that seam and pressing it open. So you can see here that the seam is open and that top bit where there's that gap that we left earlier, that has been pressed open as well. So the next step is to sew that five centimetre gap or to top stitch it. This is a little complicated. I'm gonna show you from two angles, firstly from the side. I've taken the flatbed attachment off for this part of the project and you can see I'm still using the reverse stitch and I'm sewing at the edge of the fabric and I'm pivoting to turn the corner at the bottom of that gap and again leaving my needle down to pivot and turn the corner again um, and go back up the other side. This will be a little bit more clearer in the next part of the video. So looking at that bit more closely you can see here that I'm back stitching across the top of that top stitch sewing down the edge of my opening pivoting leaving the needle in to pivot so I can go across the bottom of my five centimeter gap sewing across the bottom of that and again putting the needle down to pivot and go back up the other side this keeps the fabric in place later on when we're trying to thread our ribbon through our casing. This top stitching allows the ribbon to be threaded through. So you can see here that the stitching has gone down one side, across the bottom and up the other side. The next step is to sew the casing for the ribbon. So to make the casing we're back over to the ironing board and we're going to fold that top edge, the hemmed edge, down two and a half centimetres. You can measure this to be accurate. 
um, and I'm using the iron to put that crease in so it's a nice even crease across from one side to the other. Then I'm going to turn the bag over and repeat on the other side, folding down two and a half centimetres and ironing that flat, ready for sewing. It's also a really good idea to pin this casing in place because it can move as you sew. Take note that as I am pinning the casing down, I'm only pinning one side of the bag. I'm not pinning the bag to itself, otherwise you'll end up sewing the bag together by accident. Over to the sewing machine now, and we're going to remove the flatbed attachment again. And we will open up the bag and place the sewing machine inside of the bag. This ensures that we can sew along the edge of our bag without accidentally sewing the bag shut together. So again, I'm going to reverse stitch and I'm sewing pretty much in line with the top stitching of that first hem that we did uh, a few steps ago. And I'm making sure that I'm sewing as straight as possible and taking the pins out as I go. And when I get to the end, I am reverse stitching to lock those stitches in place. I'll then remove the bag, cut the threads off and repeat for the other side of the bag taking the pins out as I go and reverse stitching at the start and the end of this seam as well. It's now time to turn your bag the right way around so just pop your hand in, grab the bottom of the bag and turn it around on itself. Um, take the time here to poke those edges out so the corners are nice and sharp and um, flatten out the surface of your bag. The last step is to thread the ribbon through the casing. You'll need about 90 centimeters of ribbon for this part. So cut that off as you measure it and then grab yourself a safety pin and pin through the end of the ribbon, making sure that you don't hurt yourself with that and close the safety pin closed. Then turn your bag around so you have the 5cm gap on one side and push that safety pin through the gap. Now you can see that I'm pushing the end of the safety pin with one hand and gathering the fabric with my other hand. When I bring that gather through in itself, I'm making sure that I hold the safety pin with my left hand to bring it through. So again, I'm pushing it in with my right, gathering it with my left and then as I remove those gathers, I'm holding the safety pin in place with my left hand to remove them and make them flat. Bring the safety pin out through the other side and make sure the ribbon isn't curling over. Remove the safety pin. Make sure you put that aside safely. And then grab those two edges of the ribbon and draw the bag in a little so you've got more space in your ribbon and then simply wrap that ribbon around your finger and tie a knot and that will keep your drawstring secure. Then lastly test out your drawstring by grabbing hold of that knot and sliding the fabric down along there so it is gathered and shut. Now it's time to enjoy your results. Well done on creating your drawstring bag and thanks for watching this video. See you next time.